Uh, hello everybody, welcome to the Startup Grind Zagreb. Uh, my name is Augustin, I'm the chapter director and I'm hosting today uh, Davorin. So Davorin, can you tell us something uh, about yourself? Yes. <laughs> yeah, okay, uh, I'm Davorin, uh, I'm young. Uh, <laughs> I started my first, uh, first uh, business uh, when I was 20. It was uh, back in 2002 uh, in Zagreb, a small web design studio. After that, of course, I'm talking by, about my business career. career. Uh, after that, I founded li a little local newspaper, so that, that was my entrance to media. And uh, after that, I took over one uh, regional free to air TV station, which was in problems. And uh, I worked there for three years, tried uh, to establish a um, uh, comp uh, situation and uh, uh, I managed to, to raise the television a certain level and then I uh, sold 80% of the shares and uh, because I was disagreeing with the majority owner and I left the project and then I took over media rights of Formula One for Croatia. In yeah. 2011, and I became the youngest Formula One media rights holder in the world, and uh, that was my first entrance into into onto big picture, and uh, that established my contacts uh, with uh, with the best one of the best business people in the world, like Bernie Ecclestone, uh, like uh, others, other big players, uh, and uh, through Formula One, I met uh, a pretty big number of them, and. Uh, Formula One was uh, one huge step, and uh, after Formula One, uh, I established the TV station Creator TV, uh, mm -hmm. which owns TV studios, production facilities, uh, onboard vehicles, and uh, this is a big part of my work now. Uh, I bought I bought a company for web development uh, in Varaždin Zimo Digital. I established a, a yeah, chain of them. bars. Uh, of course, you need to have a bar so nobody can kick you out. Uh, that's most important, and then numerous other things. Uh, Besides that, um, uh, I joined the Crane Creation Business Angels Network uh, in 2011 and uh, became president uh, a year and a half ago. Besides that, uh, I'm advisor of Creation President in her Council for Economic Affairs and uh, that's, that's uh, it. And uh, of course, in my private life, uh, I, I love to do everything party to travel. Yeah. I traveled to more than 70 countries of the world on so numerous expeditions to Ivory Coast, Liberia, Congo, Bangladesh, Bhutan. So I had, uh, I have pretty big experience uh, in that. I have pilot license, skipper license and that's in short terms. Uh, so uh, you mentioned uh, Formula One. How did that happen? Uh, all of a sudden, it was not planned like anything in my life. Uh, I've done every, everything until now without any plans. Uh, and I saw that uh, in uh, many situations uh, that people are planning too much. And uh, mm -hmm. then I saw hundreds of plans uh, and 99% 99, 99 of them never happened. So uh, I've done everything without any plans. Uh, Formula One, um, it's a project, uh, and I want. I always highlight one thing that uh, uh, failure is part of part of every success. So uh, sure. I, I failed on TV station. I, I didn't achieve it because I disagreed with the majority owner. So that was failure because I left. Uh, and uh, okay, I had 20% of shares, but that's nothing. And mm -hmm. uh, but the, but back then, uh, one journalist uh, told me. Now listen, uh, uh, national tele television is dropping Formula One media rights. Uh, we can maybe compete. Mm -hmm. And I, I always say yes, that's also my problem. <laughs> and um, I said, okay, uh, let's have a meeting in London. Uh, let's uh, see what we can do. Uh, then we arranged a trip to London. Uh, I went there. I was waiting for my partner yeah. and he didn't show up. So just imagine the situation. I, I was uh, walking in my room and thinking this is a hidden camera. This is some kind of joke. Yeah, yeah, right. Tomorrow I have a meeting in Formula One. And, uh, and, uh, but of course, I went there. Uh, I had a plan. So uh, I will go back uh, because in the TV station, 
yeah. in uh, TV Plus. Uh, during my work there, I met almost all media people in Croatia. Mm -hmm. So that was the basement of the deal with Formula One because uh, my suggestion was and my idea was to, to cover Croatian uh, air with yeah. 10 local TV stations. In each region, one station. So that was my idea about uh, Formula One in Croatia. And uh, of course, uh, they like it because yeah. Formula One always prefer free to air because reach is uh, wider and uh, it, is, it is better for the, for the visibility of Formula One. So I started to negotiate there, uh, there uh, and uh, negotiate for, I think, two months. And uh, then they told me, uh, Davarin, uh, thank you for your patience, thank you for your interest. Uh, we choose the Arena Sport from Serbia. Then. And I said, okay, thank you for this experience, thank you for negotiations. Uh, but if everything happened with that deal with Arena Sport, uh, I'm still waiting and I'm ready to step in. Then I called, uh, I, I went, uh, I, was, I was already in Zagreb and uh, I was thinking, yeah, uh, who is owner of Arena Sport? Then I investigated a little bit and uh, I found out that the owner of uh, Arena Sport channels back then yeah. is a company called Saga from Serbia. Big company, 500 uh, employers and mm -hmm. uh, employees and uh, pretty big thing. And uh, I investigated who is the manager. I saw Goran Djakovic, I took the phone, call in the company, said, uh, can I speak with uh, your director? Uh, I am Davri Setner uh, and uh, she said, okay, I'll pass the message and uh, half an hour later, uh, phone rings and this guy is on the phone. And I said, oh, Goran, congratulations, uh, you beat me. Uh, if you are in Zagreb, uh, please, I will be happy to meet you, uh, to, to have a drink with you. And we met a couple of days later okay. and it was interesting because if you have a rights, if you have contract, uh, why should you want to meet with the potential opposite side? And we sat in the Westin Hotel for three hours. It is, it is, it's a really nice guy, and, uh, but he explained uh, his vision of this project and I, I, I felt that something is not right. So I sent another mail uh, to Formula One management and uh, said, listen, I'm still here. That was, I think, five, 15 days before the start of the season. Uh -huh. So I'm still here, okay. And uh, they thanked and everything was cool. And uh, so seven days from the first race in Australia, I had an email, dear Daverin, look, it is always like this, but you can never say that things are done until, until they are done. Our yeah. deal with the arena is uh, uh, collapsed, uh, so we will consider your offer, but we will not go below your last, uh, last thing we agreed. So, and uh, in, this in this moment, I have email. I read it, I, I was smiling, <laughs> of course. And, uh, and uh, I decided to, to go into this deal. Mm -hmm. I called my partner steel partner. The one who didn't show up in yeah. London? Yeah, because I was, okay, uh, I was too tolerant, uh, but I said, okay, uh, terms are like this, we need to pay 50% in next seven days from the sin uh, signature of the agreement uh, and uh, rest in another 23 days. Mm -hmm. And uh, okay, it's huge money. And we have uh, a couple of days left. And uh, then I realized that he doesn't have one, one kuna, one euro. And, uh, and still I, I talked to him and said, listen, uh, obviously you don't have money. I will go into that, con uh, that, that contract and that uh, project because that's, if now I have opportuni opportunity that uh, I became owner of the Formula One, which is one of the world exclusive media rights, yeah. I will make it. I will make it uh, and uh, then, but of course you're not my partner anymore, but I will keep you as a commentator of Formula One uh, for the season. And he said, yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, oh, okay, nice okay, yeah. okay. And uh, so I was, I started negotiating with uh, several big companies in Croatia 
and uh, uh, I managed to arrange a general sponsorship agreement with uh, Deutsche Telekom, mm -hmm. with Max TV. I arranged some pretty big deals, and uh, I, I won, and Formula One started to broadcast in Croatia. So we started from the second race because there was no time for, for the first race, but from the second race, uh, I've done the deal with 10 uh, local TV stations. Uh, we started to broadcast everything and uh, everything was perfect. So uh, oh, that's, that's start. But uh, I will go uh, further and uh, that commentator, yeah. he sued me after <laughs> one year because he worked it, uh, as a commentator in uh, Formula One for in 2011. And then he, w he was not showing up uh, on uh, some races and we had huge problems with him. So uh, at the end of the season, I said, thank you, uh, bye bye. And uh, he then sued me uh, that I lost. I stole his idea. That that was his idea. That he he mm. uh, he uh, uh, projected everything. So uh, and of course, law system in is Croatia is is not reliable. And uh, two months ago, I finally received final verdict. He is guilty and he needs to pay me 10,000 euros. I will never see that money, so because he doesn't have any, any property, but at least uh, something. And uh, that, that was my story with Formula One. It goes again, wow. it goes further, but uh, this is for the start, what, uh, how yeah. happened. And that's my favorite story because uh, it shows that everything is possible. Did so I was 29 years old. I didn't have any connections. Uh, that deal was made without any support, any connections, anybody uh, besides uh, me and the vision. Uh, and of course, later my partners, which recognized Formula One as a good project and went into advertising inside and everything. Yeah, you mentioned uh, something with Bernie Eccleston that uh, came later or? What? Uh, but who is uh, the owner of Formula One? Uh, owner of Formula One are certain funds, uh, capital funds, uh, and the Formula One manager, manager is Bernie Ecclestone. You mentioned something, uh, you were working with him later or? Of course, because uh, he's the owner, uh, he's the manager of Formula no, One. Manager. He still supervises everything. Yeah, of course, uh, and I was always, always thinking that uh, Bernie Ecclestone uh, is uh, some some mascot or something. Yeah. And then I started uh, to work uh, with them. And uh, I, I met him uh, numerous times and uh, he's amazing. Uh, he's uh, really, really, uh, he's clever, he's uh, really sharp uh, and uh, he runs everything and he controls everything. But that is uh, some, it, that's good because uh, he made Formula One like this. What it is, yeah. Yeah, so now I was with him uh, three days ago or four in Mexico on the race and we spoke about certain things uh, uh, and uh, he's a great guy, he's 87 years old and uh, when I speak with him like uh, we are speaking uh, with the own age people so uh, mm -hmm. I, I don't see any difference, he's young in the head, really young. Oh, well, that's great for him. No, of course, and uh, it is great for him and uh, for everybody uh, around him who, uh, which, who which are working with him, with him so, because yeah. he made so much people rich. Well, that's also good. So, uh, how much is the Formula One events uh, connected with all of your travel? Uh, okay, or did you go this to was a, this was this was my tour or no, th this was my first race in Mexico after three years. Because I didn't have time, uh, so much things are happening and uh, so much business, uh, business is really growing, uh, we are spreading and uh, so that was my first race uh, after three years. My last year uh, race before that was Singapore in 2013, so... Uh, so. When did you go uh, traveling the 70 plus uh, countries then? Before uh, one? I went on numerous expeditions, so uh, if you know Dvina Meller, uh, Dvina Meller is a uh, Croatian model uh, which uh, loves to travel and shooting mm -hmm. documentaries. So we met in pilot school in 2006 and uh, we, started to, we started to travel together. We mm -hmm. formed a club for expeditions and uh, our first expedition was uh, in 2006 uh, Burkina Faso, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Niger. Okay. Then after that we went to Central Africa, uh, Democratic Republic of Congo, Little Congo, uh, Cameroon, Gabon, then uh, Asia, uh, India, Nepal, Bhutan, Bangladesh, mm. 
then South America, Galapagos Islands, Ecuador, uh, Panama, Costa Rica, Colombia. So uh, I went on numerous trips like that. So what's your favorite uh, place that you visited? Uh, huh. I don't have my favorite place, but uh, I can top, mention... Top five. I can, I can, I can say it because each place is different. Uh, so for example, yeah. Africa is an excellent continent. It's, it's planet for itself. It's really amazing. It's something completely different. Uh, Africa, I love Af Africa. Uh, but of course, I love Galapagos Islands. Galapagos Islands are amazing. Uh, marble sand, uh, blue sea, uh, volcanic rocks, and those marine iguanas and uh, all seals. Uh, it's amazing because uh, nature is so close to you. You have thousands of animals yeah. which are not realizing human uh, existence and you can walk uh, be besides uh, seals uh, like we are we are sitting together so it's it's amazing of course yeah and turtles so of course the giant turtles uh, it's like a car uh -huh. they're like a car really so so uh, then kingdom of bhutan in the middle of himalayas uh, it's uh, amazing because it's a small country 500,000 uh, inhabitants and uh, it's trapped b between China yeah. 1 billion and India 1 billion so just imagine small hidden kingdom of Bhutan uh, uh, and I know uh, the main city Timpu uh, it has it had only one uh, semaphore and that, that was so confusing that, that they turned it off so uh, it's really, really. I can, I can uh, place, uh, and I can choose some more places, but it will take take too long. Yeah, great. Uh, so uh, you mentioned uh, you got a piloting license. Yeah. Uh, why? Because I love flying. Uh, since when I was a kid, I, I was watching planes, and uh, I was really amazed with uh, with the planes. So. Uh, then uh, I went to, to Varajdin, to Diamond Aircraft uh, Pilot School. Uh, I went there, I don't know, I don't remember, I, I know. I know a friend of mine, uh, which is commercial pilot, he invited me for one flight, one private flight, uh, just to go around. And we flew to Varajdin. Mm -hmm. and, and back then, Diamond uh, Industry, Diamond Aircraft, uh, which is one of the biggest producers of planes in the world, uh, started a project in Varajdin Airport. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I flew then uh, and I met the CEO and we started talking and then everything happened. So uh, uh, I started to going to pilot school and uh, of course, besides that, I met some wonderful people. I love Varjdin uh, pretty much. Uh, I spent there almost half a year living on the airport and uh, I have lots of friends there. And uh, uh, of course, besides piloting school, uh, I finished some deals there and we made some, uh, some business. So uh, everything was excellent. Yeah, it sounds like a great experience. Yeah, yeah, so flying let's is go great. A little bit uh, more closer to the present. So uh, you entered the Cray in 2011, you said. Yeah. So why? Uh, what did you interest? Did you? Uh, no, I, I didn't knew anything about business angels. I was asking business angels what <laughs> was that <laughs> stupid term, and uh, I was member of one panel on the Bern University. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was Professor Alan Burrell uh, that were, uh, I think, with, with, with uh, Alan Burrell from uh, University of Cambridge, with mm -hmm. Herve Perpich uh, from yeah. Crane, and uh, with some, some uh, participants from Burns. And then I met Herve Perpich, and uh, after the panel, he said, hey, you, need to, you need to become a member of Crane, it's great. So I said, okay, <laughs> let's go. And then uh, I joined the crane and started to uh, get involved into, into uh, this startup ecosystem and startups in Croatia investing and that was my start. Yeah. So because of Herve. Well, we're going to have to thank Herve later. <laughs> uh, so uh, you mentioned you invested in five startups, but only uh, two uh, officially? Two officially and three are waiting. Everything is set, but we'll make an uh, announcement. I want to credit each one of them, so I will not announce anything uh, in the same time. Mm -hmm. I will give uh, each startup uh, a certain time frame, and sure. that will be soon announced. Uh, but I'm happy that Crane will announce uh, members of Crane invested over five, 500,000 kunas in November. Oh, nice. So it's, uh, those are small numbers, maybe, for somebody, somebody, but when you are investing your own money, 
mm-hmm. uh, it's a lot. And uh, I think in Croatia we need to develop whole system uh, because we have a couple of startups per year ready for investment. I think we have five, six startups per year, good startups per year. Uh, uh, for example, Slovenia has 60. Sure. We need uh, to uh, we need to develop uh, and we'll we'll go further and it will it will become uh, better but we need some more time. Okay. So in your opinion what is uh, ready for investment for a startup? Okay, ready for investment. Uh, that means you uh, develop your idea and you are willing as a founder or, or founders to work hardly on that project without any okay. obstacles. Uh, that you will leave everything and work on this project. To dedicate yourself to the Yes, uh, because this okay. is important. We, uh, of course, it's difficult in, in the beginning, especially in yeah. Croatia. We are too bureaucratic, uh, we are too slow and complicated. Uh, but uh, I'm, I'm now looking for startups which have, which, which have strong leaders and founders. Mm-hmm. Because uh, you're investing in people. Yeah. And uh, when you see, uh, so for example, one of uh, those three startups, uh, idea was secondary. When I saw energy from the people, uh, I, I didn't plan anything and I made them. Yeah. You know, I agreed to, to, uh, to go into that project because uh, uh, I cannot explain, but uh, I saw the dedic- dedic- dedication and uh, effort and everything and uh, I like it. Uh, so so uh, I made that third. Uh, agreement uh, without planning. So do you prefer startups that uh, are not only based but uh, incorporated in Croatia or do they incorporate outside also? I don't care, I don't care but I'm suggesting uh, uh, people that if you are, if they are thinking globally yeah. they choose uh, maybe United States because they are most developed uh, and uh, Delaware is uh, pretty easy to establish a company there. Uh, you have little troubles with the bank account but uh, you need to go there and everything is solvable. So, so uh, and it's, it's much easier. So for example in Croatia I was waiting for one uh, incorporation uh, form and uh, for formation of one company I waited for 45 days because uh, yeah. they have problems, so uh, court had the problem with the name. Mm-hmm. And uh, what the hell name matters? So if I want to uh, call my company uh, Grind, uh, why, why, uh, why is that the problem? And in the States, mm-hmm. um, I incorporated the company uh, in Delaware and uh, I signed the papers on the table. Uh, I, I took a photograph of, of that paper, I sent it and uh, next morning I had a, comp- a company incorporated. No. So another week I have uh, I had an AIN and uh, I opened a bank account so I don't see why things are so complicated here in Croatia and we are fighting against against this because I was I'm always talking that uh, we are not uh, on a lower level intellectually with uh, from the Swedish mm-hmm. but Swedish people uh, they are much simpler and they 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 are doing things simpler and that's the key simplicity. That's the one key to success, for sure. So for British people, yeah. the same thing, but they are not on a higher level, but they are following the rules. They have rules that they are lasting for 400 years. They didn't change some laws and we in Croatia are changing laws each, each year and nobody knows how to, how to do business. I have my people in finances, they are, they are crazy because the uh, changes are so often that they can, uh, cannot understand. So I can imagine what's the problem for the startups in Croatia. Yeah. Nobody wants to think about uh, accounting and, uh, and uh, lawyers, uh, but you need to have strong sure. logistics if you want to succeed in Croatia. So one of the help and one of the always one part of agreements with the startups is that uh, my people is taking over care for that part. You're taking care of the bur- uh, finances, the, uh, uh, lawyers, everything. We yeah. have everything in house, so uh, so that's a huge help for them, because yeah. startups needs to do what they they are doing the best. At, that's uh, developing the product. Yeah, they should focus on the product. Of mostly, course, of course. Uh, so uh, since. Uh, you were in Crane. You mentioned you became uh, president of Crane l- what, last year or year, year and a half ago? ago? I don't know when. Year and a half. Year and a half, okay. Almost two. <laughs> Almost two. Almost two. Yeah, time flies. So time flies. 
What, what's your vision uh, for Crane and for the Croatian startup ecosystem? Okay, uh, I will be honest. Uh, I don't ask you. So no, what did you do? <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, when I entered the Crane, uh, we had few members. And I was thinking, uh, either I will uh, go out uh, or I will take a uh, role and put my energy inside and uh, mm -hmm. I will do something with the crane. So yeah. uh, we agreed on, on a second and uh, I started to work and uh, I'm proud really what we uh, became and uh, how important this crane now. Because just imagine, uh, two years ago we were a small union, but now we are in the Council of the President. Uh, we are, I just became uh, President of the Central, Europe, uh, Central Eastern European Zone of uh, IBAN, the strongest uh, organization oh, wow. of business angels in the world. And uh, we are important in that, that uh, world, so I'm happy. And of course, I was lobbying hard for this conference, uh, which will happen on 29th and 30th of November. Ivan Winter University. That's a yearly conference. Uh, it's 14th edition. Uh, and I was so proud because the last year uh, the conference was in Copenhagen, a uh, year before uh, in Helsinki. Uh, let me just uh, provide some uh, background. Uh, so, Korean is the Creation Business Angels uh, Network yeah. uh, Association, actually. Yeah. And uh, even is European Business Angels Network. Yeah, uh, Crown uh, Union of Business Angels in Europe. Yeah. So for the first time, uh, basically they're coming here in yeah. Uh, Croatia. Yeah. So that's a huge success. Uh, I was fighting against uh, Norway, Ukraine and Switzerland. They were the comp competition? Yeah, of course, for, mm -hmm. uh, for hosting that conference and we won a year ago. And we started preparations a year ago. Uh, budget is huge. Uh, cost is huge. We will yeah. create the budget. We are creating budget, but uh, of course, uh, uh, I went to city of Zagreb and mayor, and uh, I suggested that uh, why they, they had the Zagreb Connect con uh, conference, and I said, uh, yeah. why should we do two things at the same time? Let's do one big thing, and uh, I can say he agreed in five minutes. He said, okay, great, uh, you have all budget and everything from Zagreb Connect, uh, do, do, do the do job. It. Yeah. So uh, I have excellent cooperation with the city of Zagreb and uh, uh, of course uh, our president supported. As soon as we uh, had, a, uh, had a decision that we are host, the yeah. president gave me a letter of support and uh, high auspices, so uh, it was official presidential so, event from uh, the start. So it, it was huge help in, uh, in all uh, later things. But uh, of course, uh, VIPnet, second biggest Croatian telecom, is a general sponsor. Uber is a serial sponsor. Uh, we, have, we just signed an uh, agreement with Chivas. Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, one big announcement to make uh, in a uh, in, in few days. Uh, another golden sponsor. Huge companies. And uh, I'm really proud because we will bring one of, uh, some, some of the best names in the world uh, to that conference. It will happen in Lisinski Hall. We'll have 1,800 participants. Bruce Dickinson from Iron Maiden is coming. Uh, Dove Moran, who invented yeah. USB stick, is coming. Wow. Uh, Hansi Heinzmann, uh, Peter Cowley, huge angel investors are, are coming. CEO of Cisco is coming. Uh, really? CEO of technology of uh, European Space Agency is coming. Uh, people from NASA are coming. Uh, and a lot, lot, lot more. Yeah, I did uh, see somewhere there's going to be, uh, so basically most of Eben is coming, like 400 uh, plus business angels? Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll have, I don't know the exact number, but we'll have hundreds of uh, investors and business angels. And uh, in this world, uh, we have lots of fog. And uh, yeah. we invited only people with the track record, because track record is the most important. When somebody, sure. uh, lots of people are talking that they are investors and etc., and they are just not. So uh, we try to to uh, highlight the the real ones, and uh, we we try to de defog this area because it's important that uh, founders and startups are are talking with real investors, and so they sure. they not lose time with with false people. Yeah, it's um, almost. A D double damage to the startup and to the ecosystem yeah. if it's an early stage ecosystem that needs startups yeah. to succeed to yeah. come back and share the knowledge and 
the wealth a little bit. <laughs> um, so, uh, biggest startup uh, conference in Croatia, uh, definitely one of the, if not the most important conference uh, for you startups. Say it. You say it. Well, uh, I usually do the Startup Digest uh, calendar, so I do all the, I uh, put all the startup events for Croatia on the calendar and I'm always in touch with uh, my counterparts in different countries and different continents and from what I've seen, the only uh, huge conference at, uh, that's happening at the same time is uh, Slush in Norway, I think. Uh, but I will tell you one thing, uh, founder of Slush is coming yeah. here. Rick Wasikai and he's coming here because he's well, vice it's president a, it's of It's a good thing you didn't so. have a mic, mic dropped. No. <laughs> so no, that was the part of the problem because we didn't want to collide with Slash, but uh, yeah. only that, that was the only time we could get Lisinski Hall and I wanted Lisinski because uh, I want the best place for this in Zagreb and Lisinski is certainly the best place in, at this time. Well, for those of you who don't know about Lisinski Hall, I'm gonna put in uh, some uh, links uh, under the video. Um, so, conference is happening, everything is set. What are your expectations from the conference? I expect to see lots of good people. Uh, I expect uh, that we will, on some way, change the business mentality in Croatia because uh -huh. we need to change mentality uh, because uh, that's a wrong perception of business people uh, that uh, they are all criminals and corrupt uh, and that that's bad uh, and uh, private business is creating uh, jobs and yeah. private business is uh, in the real sector is moving this country on so we need to put that on the right place and that's uh, main thing second thing to host 20 excellent startups, finalists, they will be uh, in competition, they will receive huge prices for Croatia, 50,000 euros cash. So the first prize is 20,000 euros, second prize is 10,000 euros, third prize is 7,000 euros, we yeah. have 5,000 euro uh, prize of the city of Zagreb and uh, our audience, uh, audience will, will choose uh, their winner and that will be also 5,000 euros. Besides that, We'll uh, bring two people in Tel Aviv from mm -hmm. startups. We'll bring two people uh, to Silicon Valley, all cost covered. Uh, some of other partners will, will also give huge prizes, uh, but I cannot speak uh, uh, about this yet, but this will be announced in the next few days. So yeah, sure. it will be excellent. So other expectation is uh, that uh, people have fun and yeah. to learn something. Uh, because uh, we, we are always, always bringing good people uh, and this will be excellent uh, for learning and for, for everything. Two full days of, of this. Yeah, I couldn't agree. I can't wait for the conference. Uh, do you have uh, any advice for the startup founders from Croatia or startup founders in general? Yeah, uh, I said previously, uh, don't, be, don't be afraid of uh, failure. Yeah. When you fail, just learn the best things from the failure and go go ahead. Uh, be stubborn, because stubbornness is uh, really needed. Yeah. To be just on one direction uh, and uh, at that time, okay, I, I'm not a role model for that, but uh, try to focus uh, at one project at a time. Yeah. Because so that's, that's uh, important. So I'm in a business for 14 years and uh, I cannot, I, I have my pro uh, problems with myself, I cannot be focused on one project and that's, uh, that's the way, but, uh, but my advice for the startups is that focus is important on one project at a time. Okay, thank you. Uh, now I'm going to ask if uh, anyone from the audience uh, has any question for Darwin. Not everybody at once. Okay, there's a question. So, uh, my first question is, uh, where can we learn more about program of the conference? Where can we buy tickets? And from perspective of a startup, if we didn't apply on startup competition, is there still a chance to meet with business angels and to talk to them? Uh, okay, uh, you can find more at the website of the conference or a Korean website, it's korean.hr. It's uh, www Iban, uh, Winter University, Iban, w, uh, U. 2016.com, you'll show that on screen. I'm going to put all the links 
under the... Okay, okay. great. Uh, I'm gonna put and, all the links, yeah. And uh, of course, for startups that didn't enter the final <coughs> contest, of course, there will be lots of opportunities. And uh, that's a good uh, way to highlight one thing I forgot. Uh, so, for the pitches, I think average pitch is nine seconds long. Nine seconds. Nine seconds. Because when you are with someone uh, walking towards the hallway or you're in an elevator, you, you have nine seconds, up to nine seconds to, to interest somebody for you. So I experienced those kind of uh, things and uh, you need to be clear who you want and uh, then to approach him and ask, can I ask one question? And that question should be uh, game changer in, in her attention, in his attention. So, so if you want, uh, you need to be prepared and you need to be focused and you have nine seconds to, for the first question. And then if you are good, uh, that person, he can be he can be richest person in the world, and he can uh, he can then uh, make interest and uh, and he can be interested in you and uh, you can have a chance to g uh, to get a business card and then you have chance to send him an email with longer explanation. So first step is always important. How do you approach how do you approach a person and uh, to be focused? Uh, you can you can investigate and you can uh, find find out some interesting things about that person. Yeah. So if he likes to fish, uh, to go on fishing trips, so, and you can approach him, oh, listen, I, I learned that you, I heard that you, you are like fishing trips, uh, I, I like this, lie. <laughs> but uh, get attention uh, and uh, that's a good icebreaker and uh, then you can have more talks if you are good to that person. So is uh, that the way startups usually, startup founders approach you? Uh, sometimes yes, and that's good uh, because I'm, okay, I have a wide uh, area of interest, uh, but I can remember one thing in, in Budapest. So um, I was there attending uh, one uh, pitch from the Hungarian Business Angels Network, and there was a couple of interesting startups. One w had uh, one project in the States uh, related to uh, film industry, and after that pitch, uh, there was an after party and we were drinking, having fun. And I was, I, I approached this uh, startup to, to those founders and uh, started to talk about them and asking for, for some more questions. Uh, I just returned for, for uh, We Are Family Gala Foundation dinner in New York. Uh, I met Bono from U2 and uh, there was President Jimmy Carter, ex-President Jimmy Carter and lots of interesting people like Nile Rogers. Uh, he and his wife Nancy are organizing excellent, this excellent thing. Uh, and uh, I was thinking to connect them and to, uh, I had a uh, pretty good feeling uh, uh, about this and then I started to talking with a uh, guy and, uh, and uh, after 10-15 minutes he said ah, I need to go home uh, and I said okay can you stay a little bit longer uh, just uh, to ask you some more questions, uh, some details. He said no, 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 no and he said uh, some stupid reason. I, I, I don't have anything against if he had a child or a pet or something at home uh, and uh, but the reason was some oh, I'm tired or like that and that's okay okay and um, he said yeah, I'll call tomorrow I said, yeah. uh, and next day we we're leaving uh, Budapest he started to call me and I, I, I was not interested anymore he, missed his he had a moment and I was really interested but Later, I was, I was not, because I had uh, hundreds of phone calls from that time and uh, I forgot about this and uh, said, okay, it's now bothering me. And uh, he, this guy is he's still sending me emails, phone calls, everything. I said, I'm not interested anymore. So use opportunity. When you have an opportunity, use it. And in, invest in that opportunity, your time and energy. That's the least uh, you can do. So uh, that, that, that was uh, also, also one of the points. Okay, great. Uh, so does anybody else from the audience have any questions? Oh, there's a question. Oh, wait, I don't have it now. I do have it. Yeah. Uh, using your impact as a business angel and your experience, uh, can you tell me what are you doing to uh, bureaucracy problems uh, which are here in Croatia uh, go away? 
great, great question uh, because it's, it, it bothers our, our, our whole community. And uh, of course, uh, in my contacts uh, with the ministers, with the administration, I'm always highlighting the points. So for example, last time on a council meeting in the office of the president, I hi highlighted the fact that in Croatia you, you have a simple invoice and this invoice is defined by five different laws and eight uh, sub-law acts. In the States, in the UK, you have one PDF document. So that's a, that's a showcase of uh, Croatian bureaucracy. And uh, I think, okay, uh, President, uh, she does not have uh, any, any constitutional powers, but uh, she has uh, her influence and uh, she, she is really talking about business. She wants things uh, to change and uh, we're using credibility uh, to impact uh, decision makers. And of course, uh, uh, I have common contacts with, with the ministers, with the vice minister, ministers, with the, some presidents of the agencies, and uh, we are using our, our expertise to, uh, to show them the way. Because I don't blame, I don't blame them, because uh, it's hard to understand the business if you are not in the business and you have never been in business, so uh, it's a completely different world. So for them, maybe this sounds uh, uh, unimportant, but it's, uh, it's uh, life or death for the business people. Uh, so, if there, if there is no more uh, questions, uh, we'll like to ask to for some uh, final thoughts for uh, startups, startup founders, entrepreneurship, or well, basically <laughs> anything else you want to say now? Uh, okay, I will say I, I just have one pearl <laughs> for oh, the end. Pearls are good. Yeah. Pearl, uh, yeah. I made half of my businesses and, uh, and projects uh, arrangements uh, on some parties and uh, uh, on, on the really different places, uh, sometimes in the blurry conditions and everything. And of course, there is always time for business. And uh, yeah. uh, don't underestimate partying. <laughs> this is the most important part of, of, of the business. And of course, but I'm like this, uh, so uh, I really like, uh, like to, to go around, uh, to meet different people, to party and to have fun. And uh, if you can connect those two things, uh, that's excellent. And uh, so uh, don't underestimate the parties. Well, that's great. And try not to underestimate any parties in the future. Well, uh, thank you for coming today. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you everybody for coming and uh, have a great night.